Bibles, if you would, please. Turn to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25, if you need the notes for tonight, didn't get them coming in, just hold your hand up. The men are ready to serve you with those. Don't be frightened by the length of the notes. Just lots of scripture in there, and we'll move on through. I want to thank you for being faithful on Wednesday night. Just a joy to, just to pause in the middle of the week to remember, to be focused, to be trained, to look to God. So I appreciate it tonight. Matthew 25, beginning in verse 14, a very familiar parable, though we're not speaking much on the parable. It's kind of a jumping off place for us tonight to talk about uh, one simple thought. But it is, it permeates this parable, and we'll go from there. Matthew chapter 25, verse number 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And said unto one, and unto one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made him other five talents. And likewise he that received two talents, he gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth, and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received the five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. The Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid my talent in the earth. Lo, thou, there thou hast, that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it to him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall be have abundance, but from, every, but from him that hath not shall be taken even that he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Father, help us tonight, Lord, as we look at a very simple word, a very simple trait, a very simple labor, decision, Lord, that we need to make. Lord, I need the message tonight. Let it be a blessing to others as well. Lord, let us be conscious, let us be aware of our need, and let us be willing to let you build us in this area, because, Lord, we all need to be, grow in this area of faithfulness. Lord, so just speak to us tonight, just challenge us tonight for your glory and for the sake of those around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. you. may be seated. Looking tonight as I want to be faithful. I want to be faithful. We find in the, this parable that uh, he, to the two servants, he said, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. He said, Preacher, why, do we, why does the Bible talk so much about faithfulness? Why do you talk so much about faithfulness? It's because I need to continually grow in faithfulness. I know you think I'm perfect. No. But I, I have to grow in faithfulness. I have to work at this thing called faithfulness. It is the battle of the age that we have, this idea that we determine in ourselves to be faithful. And as I was preparing for this and looking at this, I was just trying to even think just a little bit, how many people actually even desire to be faithful? I mean, if you... 
without you having to ask them and put them on the spot, would they, could they say before the Lord and in their own life, I want to be faithful. I desire to be faithful. I, I want to increase in my faithfulness. That should be the goal for all of us. That should be the aspiration. That should be a high bar, if you will, and standard for all of us in our character, this idea of faithfulness. Here in this parable, it teaches us that he said to those two, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. So let's, not a deep message tonight, but we're just going to track through the Bible, what the Bible teaches us about this thing about being faithful, so that we can then grow and we can then be helped in this idea of being faithful. I want you to notice, first of all, I think it's there in your notes, uh, what faithful defined in the Webster Dictionary of 1828. I like looking at the Dictionary of 1828, not because that's the one I used in school. It wasn't printed yet. But... But I like it because that's the same era as when the King James was, was made, basically. And uh, so many, the definitions refer to scriptures, and they use scriptures as the example. And so it's, it's that context that we have in the English language for that time. But there it is, and it's laid out in the four definitions, four aspects of the definition of faithful. We find, first of all there, if you look at your notes, fidelity, loyalty, firm adherence to allegiance and duty, as the faithfulness of a subject. So it's fidelity, just being true, just being faithful. Number two, truth. Veracity, as the faithfulness of God. Strict adherence to injunctions and to the duties of a station as the faithfulness of servants or ministers. Strict performance of promises, vows, or covenants, constantly in affection as the faithfulness as a husband or wife. So it's fidelity, it's truth, it's strict adherence to duties, and it's strict performance. That's what Webster says was the definition of faithfulness, being faithful. Uh, I put it this way, and I've done it so often because it just reminds me, but it also tells us why it's such a challenge to be faithful. I have a simple definition. Faithfulness is consistently being in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing, the right way, with the right spirit and right heart. I mean, it's just, that is it, faithfulness. Faithfulness is consistently being in the right place, where you're supposed to be, at the right time, doing the right thing, the right way, with the right spirit, and the right heart. That is a simple definition of faithfulness. And so we're looking tonight at what the Bible talks about being faithful. And I hope you desire Say, I want to be faithful. Now, for a man to be faithful, let's just think about it. Faithful. It's not hard. It's not hard to understand what that means. It means faithful. First of all, it means full of faith. Full of faith. Now, I know that it takes faith to be faithful. But more than that, I think faithfulness is more the product or the evidence of faith than the making of it. So faithfulness is the product or the evidence of faith. Plus, it does take faith to be faithful. You just have to have faith that God's going to bless, that God's going to give you the grace, that God's going to give you the strength, God's going to give you the energy, God's going to give you the desire to do what you need to do. So it means full of faith. It's a lifelong goal. It's a lifelong aspiration. We have to watch ourselves to keep ourselves from slipping. How many understand you can be faithful for a while, but it's always going to be a tendency to slip in faithfulness and not be faithful as you ought to be. So it means full of faith, but also I believe it means faith to the full. Faith to the full. In other words, faith to the full in. If you say that, say that person is faithful, what you're saying is you have faith to the full in them. So it's being full of faith, but it's also faith to the full. In other words, you look, we can have, God is faith to the full. You can just count on Him to do everything that He's promised to do. And, but if we say that about somebody else, they're faithful, it means we have, we have faith to the full in them. We expect that. We anticipate that. We can count on them and what they're doing. So we're looking at being faithful tonight. So very quickly, some Bible examples. There's a lot of examples in the Bible, but God... And very few actually called faithful. For example, Moses was called faithful. There in Hebrews 3 and 5, it says, Moses verily was faithful in all his house. And he says, as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. Now, Moses wasn't perfect. Moses had a temper issue. He had an anger issue. He killed the Egyptian. He uh, smote the rock. He broke the tablets when he came down. He had a little bit of a temper issue. But God says he was faithful. Moses was faithful in all his house. He was faithful as, first of all, a servant. Is that in your notes, Hebrews 3, 5? 
Okay? He's faithful in all his house as a servant. So just as a servant of God, he was faithful. In other words, he was in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing the right way with the right spirit and the right heart. He was faithful. He was full of faith. But also as a servant for a testimony. So he is faithful as a servant for a testimony. Our testimony before God is based many times just on our faithfulness. How faithful we are to the word and how faithful we are to God. Abraham was a faithful man. Uh, the Bible says he was faithful. Galatians 3, 8. It says, And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed, promising the Messiah to come, so that they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Faith. So Abraham was faithful. Abraham was not perfect. He had a little issue with lying when he got scared. He lied about his, his wife when he got fear. So he was not a perfect man, but he was faithful. He was faithful. Daniel, and we'll talk more about him tonight, Lord willing. Daniel was classified as faithful. There it says there in Daniel chapter 6, verse number 4. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. They tried to find some fault with him. They tried to find some issue with him. But they could find none occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful. Neither was there any error or fault found in him. And so the, even his enemies found him faithful. So God talks about being faithful. So we think about Daniel, we think about Abraham, we think about Moses, some of the few people that God said were actually faithful. So I have to ask myself if God was still writing his book or still God was still making a list of those that are faithful could my name be on it? My desire would be, I'm not saying it would, but we have to have a look at that. So tonight we're looking about, I want to be faithful. Some very simple things about being faithful. And we've seen the definition, we've seen some examples. Now let's get into what the Bible teaches us about faithfulness. Number one, faithfulness is rare and it needs to be real. Faithfulness is rare. And it needs to be real. In Proverbs 20, verse number 6, it says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. I mean, everybody tells you how good they are. Everybody tells you how nice they are. Everybody tells you what, how powerful they are. Uh, especially back in their younger days. The, old, the older I get, the better I was. We know that, all right? Back when we look at the history. But it says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but, but, a faithful man who can find? In other words, talk is cheap. Everybody will tell you how good they are. Everybody will tell you how wonderful they are. He said, but God says, but a faithful man, who can find? It's rare to find a faithful man. It's rare to find a faithful lady. It's rare. That's what God says. It's very rare. Now, why is it rare? Why is it rare to find a faithful person? Why is it rare? Because, well, let's put it this way. Is faithfulness a spiritual gift? No, it's not a spiritual gift. We don't find it with, 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 the, with the healings. No, it's not a spiritual gift. Faithfulness is not a spiritual gift. Is it a talent that somehow you just have, like my singing? No. Is it in genetics? No. Faithfulness is strictly character and culture. Character and culture. Faithfulness is something we decide what we're going to do. You say, well, I just... It's just not in me. It's not in anybody, in anybody to be faithful, except by as the Spirit gives us, as, as, ex, except by His character. We all have a tendency to be not faithful. It's easy to be not faithful. It's natural for us. If we're not constantly working at it and focusing on it, we will not be faithful. We'll become more and more unfaithful. So this idea of being faithful, it's rare because it's not a spiritual gift. It's not a talent. It's not a genetic. It's in character and culture. So we're to be growing both in culture and in character, developing faithfulness. It's something we can do. Parents, you need to be demonstrating character in your family. See, parents, you're building, you're putting a, you're building a family culture. Your kids are growing up in an environment, in a culture. They may be an American culture, it may have been Filipino culture, as far as nationality goes, but in your household, when you close those doors, when you're there, you are developing a culture in your house, and we need to do our best with God's help and God's grace to develop a culture of faithfulness and establish character, individual character of faithfulness. 
You ought to say, we want to have a family culture of faithfulness, where the whole family says, that's just how we live, that's just how we are, that's how we're growing up, with faithfulness. So parents, you must demonstrate that, you must build that, you must teach that. So I have to ask, what kind of culture are you building in your house? In your home, is it a culture of faithfulness, where that's expected, where that's what's prized, what's that's magnified, what that's rewarded? It's often said, you get what you reward. So in your household, what do you reward? Good looks or faithfulness? That sort of thing. You have to develop that culture. Why is it so rare? i got news for you, because it's hard work. It's hard work to be faithful, to be in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing the right way with the right heart and right spirit consistently. It is hard work. And we are lazy and careless people. But it can be done. So you say, well, I'm just not gifted that way. No. Faithfulness is not a gift. Well, God didn't give me that spiritual gift. No, it's not a spiritual gift. I don't have that talent. It's not a talent. It's a choice. It's character and culture. And so when we say, well, I, I just can't be faithful. You can be as faithful as God will allow you to be. All right. So it is rare. It is rare. It shouldn't be, but it is. And God says, who can find? He said, every man will proclaim his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. Very quickly, number one. So it's rare. Faithfulness is rare. Number two. Faithfulness is is a requirement in stewards. Faithfulness is a requirement in stewards. And we've known that. It's preached so many times in 1 Corinthians 4, 2. Moreover, it is required, not suggested, not kind of hoped for. It is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Now, we know a steward is somebody who takes care of the possessions of somebody else. We are all stewards of everything we have. As a Christian... We are all stewards of everything we claim, if you will, as ours, because it's not ours, it's all of God's. Psalm 89, 11 says, The heavens are thine, talking to God, the earth also is thine, for the world and the fullness thereof thou hast founded them. So everything belongs to God. So whatever I have in my hand, whatever I have in my house, whatever I use, that is God's, and I'm just the steward, the caretaker of it, for the time being. That's what the parable of the talents was. They were just stewards. He delivered them and they were supposed to take care of it and multiply it and then give the reckoning when he comes. So we are all stewards of all we have. Now, just think, think about that. My life is his life. So what my whole life, I'm just a steward of that. And I'm required to be faithful with this life. You're here tonight. Do you know you're here tonight? In case you lost track, you're here tonight. But that's good. Because as a child of God, you are being good stewards of your life. Good stewards of this four-hour sermon I'm getting ready to preach. Good stewards of your car that brought you here. Good stewards of your family. You're bringing them under the house of God. Good stewards as you treat them to pray. You're, you're being good stewards of your, your time, your energy, your car, your, because you're here. Because this is God's life. It's God's car. It's God's family. It's, God, it's God's time He's given me. And I, if you say, well, God, do you want me to go to church tonight? You don't have to ask Him that. Unless you're providentially hindered, in other words, God stops you, that's where he wants you to be. And so you're being good stewards of that, of the health that you've got, of the time that you have, of the gifts he's given you, of the talent. So we're to, it's required in stewards. It's required. So we talk about faithful. We must be faithful stewards of the word as well. That's what 2 Timothy 2, 2 says. And the things which thou have heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou... To what kind of men? Is that in your notes, know, Second Timothy 2, 2? Let's look at it. And the things which thou have heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to who? Faithful men who should be able to teach others also. God, wants to, God has committed to us the word of God. He's committed us the faith once delivered to the saints. And so he's looking for faithful people to teach so they can deliver 
it to others also. So it carries on generation to generation. We'll look there, that's, there's, set, there's three or four spiritual generations just in that verse. He said, the things you have heard of me. So he's got me to you, the same commit to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So four generations spiritually right there. But he said, but we need faithful men. Why do we need faithful men to, to be stewards of the word of God? To make sure it's right, to make sure it's true, to make sure it's broadcast properly, make sure it's interpreted properly and it's taught properly. Doing the right thing, the right place, at the right time, in the right manner the right spirit and heart. So be faithful of those stewards. And also we have to remember we're going to be giving account. We will give an account of our stewardship. So I, I don't want to give account. Too late. Too bad. You're going to give an account. 2 Corinthians 5, 9. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent we may be approved of, accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that which he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Just like in the parable, the counting day came. Here the master, he went off to a farther country, spent there a long time, and came back. Of course, a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, who's come, he's gone back to heaven, if you will, Long time, he's coming back, and we will give an account. So when we talk about being faithful, it is a requirement for us to be stewards. We have to be faithful. Faithful with all that we have. So, number one, faithfulness is rare. And it's got to be real. We can talk it all, we can talk faithfulness all we want. But you don't talk faithfulness, you do faithfulness. You live faithfulness. You demonstrate faithfulness. It's real needs to be real, but it's rare. It's required. Number three, now this is one we'll like, faithfulness is rewarded. Amen. Aren't you glad? Faithfulness is rewarded. God says he'll reward us for being faithful. And here's what's exciting. Reward for faithfulness is disproportionate to our faithfulness. It's disproportionate to our faithfulness. We find there in our parable, notice what he said. In verse 21, And the Lord said unto him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou in the joy of the Lord. He said, you've been faithful over a few. Yeah, if it was just directly, just straight proportional. He said, you're faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over a few things. But no! He said, you've been faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many. The rewards, by the way, that's how God rewards, isn't it? He always rewards us above and beyond what we think we ought to, above and beyond what we should get. It's just that joy. So his, it rewards us. Being faithful, there in that parable, we find it's disproportionate. So much the more. That's why in Revelation 2.10 it says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. But he that is faithful unto death, and I will, but thou faithful unto death, I will give thee a crown of life. I'm glad that no matter what the cost, if you will, for us to being faithful, God's going to reward more so. You can't outdo God, you can't outgive God, and God's going to reward that faithfulness. So you're going to be struggling to say, well, I want to be faithful. God will reward faithfulness. What a great God we have. And so we find that faithfulness, we see how quick we're going? Faithfulness is rare. Let's be rare. Let's be rare. Let God, when he says, but a faithful man who can find, he can say, but I know some down in Pleasanton. I know some in San Ramon. I know some in Tracy. I know... Let him be found. It's required. And it's rewarded. Very quickly, faithfulness in a very simple definition is reliability. Faithfulness is reliability. It's a simple one word definition, just being reliable. Are we faithful? Faithful. Very quickly, the Bible says I need to be reliable or faithful in all my works. In all my works. I mean, everything I do, I'm supposed to be faithful in it. There's no area of my life where I don't, well, you don't have to be faithful in it. No, I need to be faithful. Daniel 6, 3, we read this, but let's look at it a little bit deeper. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king sought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. 
So they're trying, to, they're out looking for problems. They're out looking for places they can accuse him. They're looking for some weakness in his character. But they could find none occasion, nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault in him. In other words, Daniel there, in at the office, Daniel in his work, Daniel in his life, they could not find fault because he was fault, because he was faithful. They could not find error or fault. In other words, Daniel at the office was consistently in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing the right way with the right spirit and right heart. I mean, that was just what he did all the time. That was his life before God and before the rest of the world. And so we have to understand in all our works, we need to be faithful. Be faithful in everything we do. So, Sunday school teachers, be faithful. Have the right spirit, the right heart, the right thing, the right place. The right... Just be faithful. Deacons, be faithful. Choir members, be faithful. Being in the right place, the right thing, the right way, the right spirit, the right heart. Usher, nursery workers, cleanup crew, cutting no corners. Just being faithful. Just being faithful. Faithfulness is reliability in all our works. Faithfulness, number two, is reliability in all my words. In all my words. Now, for some folks, works is easier than having our words be faithful. But in our words, we need to be faithful. The preacher, what does that mean? That means they need to be true and correct. They need to be true and correct. There in your notes, Proverbs 14, 5. A faithful witness. Somebody who, as we talk, somebody as we testify, a faithful witness will not lie. But a false witness will utter lies. A faithful witness will not not usually not, not occasionally not, but will not lie. So if I'm going to be faithful in my words, I can't lie. I have to be truthful. So we go back to our building of a character and culture of faithfulness in our families, in our homes, do we make sure that lying is not acceptable? Not demonstrated, not half-truths, not half-lies, not accepted in the home. Being faithful. This culture of being faithful in our words. In our works, in our home, but also in our words. They have to be true. They need to be correct and accurate. Correct and accurate. Proverbs 25, 13. As the cold of snow in the time of harvest. Snow is that white stuff. You see on the mountains around here. Sometimes. As the cold of snow and harvest. In other words, in harvest time when you say, Woo, boy, it feels good. It's nice and cool. We have a little breeze out here. We've got a little coldness. As the cold of snow in the time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to them that send him. For he refreshes the soul of his masters. So they're a faithful messenger. In other words, they, he communicates the message as intended by those that sent him. So the, you, the masters are saying, this is the message. This is what you're supposed to say. This is how you're supposed to communicate it. You're supposed to communicate with this spirit and with this attitude. And so it says, a faithful messenger to them that sendeth him, for he refreshes this soul. So our words must be true and it must be correct, must be accurate, must be so. And they should be discreet and appropriate. Our words must be discreet and appropriate. Proverbs eleven thirteen, a talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. It's not talking about covering up sin, but it's just talking about you don't have to be a tattletale. You don't have to be spreading gossip. You don't have to be telling everything you know about everybody. And so, did you hear about this? Did you hear about that? Did you... No, somebody who's faithful in their words, true, correct and accurate, and discreet and appropriate. Just because we know it, we don't have to say it. Hello? Controlling that tongue. Faithfulness is reliability in all my works. They could not find a problem with that. Why he was faithful. Just faithful. In all our words. And then in all our ways. Reliability in all our ways. Our works, our words, and then our ways. By ways, I mean all our life. In all our life, both... Small and large. If you've tuned out and come back to this, this is key to us being faithful. It's key for me being faithful. Again, I'm preaching to me. I have to work on this. I have to be reminded of this. Luke 16.10. Is that in your notes? 
Look, look what it says. He that is faithful in that which is what, class? Least. Which is what? Least. Is what? Is that in, is that in your notes? Yeah. All right, good. No. He that is faithful in that which is what? Least is faithful also in much. He that is unjust in least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit your trust to your trust true riches? And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? But we go back up to that first line. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. Now, yeah, here's the question. How little is least? I mean, it's not just one. It's how little is least? The very least, the very smallest. Somehow we got the idea because something is small, faithfulness doesn't count. No, God counts it. Yeah. Notice what it says. He that is faithful in that which is least. What's the next word? He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. Doesn't say will be. He says you are. Are you listening to me? Didn't say who can be, or might be, or probably is. He didn't say if you're faithful in that which is least, you're probably faithful. No, he said you are. So because here's the key. Character isn't just for the big things. He's saying if you've got the character to be faithful in what's least, you're also going to be faithful in what's what's greater. I mean, you, we take care of the small things, the big things will take care of themselves. If we have in our character, in our nature, in our habit, in our heart, that I want to be and I'm doing what I can to be faithful in the little things, he said, you'll also be faithful in the big things. If we can have the character and letting God and the Holy Spirit work in our lives to be faithful in the small deeds, the small words, the small habits, the small things, small things in the workplace, small things in the church, just being faithful in the little things. If your job was to go through the pews every week and take those uh, connection cards and make sure they're lined up and put in the right spot and there's right number of them there and they're all turned the right direction and you say, I'm going to take care of that. God said, if you can be faithful in that which is the least, you can be faithful. You are also faithful in the big stuff. Faithfulness to your marriage. Faithfulness to your family. Hello? In all my ways. All the areas of my life. The large and the small. Reliability in all my ways. Meaning, all areas of my life. Small and large. So, but preacher, that's hard. Yeah. That's why faithfulness is rare. Not only that... But it means at all times of my life. At all times. Not just all areas, but all times of my life, both good and bad. Both good and bad. Proverbs 25, 19. Confidence in an unfaithful man in the time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. If you've ever had a broken tooth down to the, down to the nerve or a foot out of joint, you know how painful it is. And that's what it says. Confidence in an unfaithful man in the time of trouble. It's like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Times of trouble. It's one thing to be faithful when it's, everything's smooth and easy. It's another to be faithful in times of trouble. So, preacher, what do I do when I have problems? Be faithful. What do I do when I have pressures? Be faithful. I got news for you. <laughs> Faithfulness is very, very, very seldom convenient. Very seldom is a real test of faithfulness convenient. It's going to be inconvenient. It's going to be a challenge. That's why it's so rare. But a faithful man, God says, who can find? But even as I say that, listen carefully. Even as I say faithfulness is not convenient... Unless you've made it so. When it becomes a priority in our life to be faithful, you'll be fine how much more convenient it is. 
than if you're trying to decide every time, will I be faithful in this or not? Am I going to do this? No, I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to be with God's grace and God's help as long as He providentially hinders me. I'm just going to be faithful in this. Then you'll find it's much easier. But when you're deciding every time, am I going to do it or not? Am I going to be faithful or not? You'll find how inconvenient it is. But when you've made up your mind and say, no, with God's help and God's grace, I'm going to be faithful in this, you'll be surprised how much easier it is. It doesn't mean it's not going to cost you something. It doesn't mean you're not going to have to take a stand. But it is easier. Proverbs 13, 17, A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. Man, it's just a healthy thing. It's just the opposite of trusting an unfaithful messenger. So I need to make sure that I am faithful, I'm reliable in all my ways, that's in all times of my life, both the good and bad. Good and bad. Just being faithful. Very quickly, lastly, we find faithfulness is a reflection. Faithfulness is a reflection. You say a reflection of what? No, it's a reflection of who? It's a reflection of God. It's a reflection of God. 1 Corinthians 1 9, God is faithful. Aren't you glad God is faithful? Oh, He's always faithful. He's always true. God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Hebrews 13 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. If that's not another good definition of faithfulness, just the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's reliable. He's just there all the time. That's why knowing that God is faithful, Christ is faithful, we need to be faithful. Matthew 5 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Could I say your faithfulness? Our faithful good works. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. My faithfulness is a reflection of His faithfulness. Oh, I want to reflect Him in my life so others can see God, so others can glorify God. It's just reflect. Preacher, why should I be faithful? To glorify Him. Why should I be faithful? To reflect Him. To reflect Christ who's inside of me. Let's just be faithful. Back in our text. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. It's hard work. It's dependence upon the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit because we can't do it ourselves. But as I said, it's not a spiritual gift. It's not a talent. It's character and culture and decision to let God work in us. Be faithful. Be faithful. Let's bow our heads, please.